Today I want to answer a question. I get it all the time. The website gets it all the time. And it's a very well-meaning question. But lots of times, either betrayed spouses will ask this for their unfaithful spouse, or unfaithful spouses will ask me, if I come to the EMS weekend, are they just going to shame and embarrass and humiliate me and rake me over the coals? It's like unfaithful spouses think that you know, the EMS weekend is like this scared straight program, right? Where we're going to line you up and yell at you and scream at you and embarrass you and like, you know, torture you into never doing this again and all that absurdity. And I'm making light of the question, but I, I really want to very genuinely, compassionately tell you that no, there's no way that we would do that. That doesn't work anyway. I'm not commenting on the scared straight program. That scared straight approach in infidelity care uh, and professional care really just doesn't work anyway. You see, you have to understand, you're not dealing with rookies. You're not dealing with, you know, people just out of school and just out of a little certification program or that, you know, got this little infidelity care degree off, you know, the internet on some weird, obtuse website, you know, they, they did a little 50 question <laughs> test and they got certified. No, listen, Rick Reynolds, the guy that saved my life and saved my marriage has been doing this literally 33 years. He's one of the top therapists in the entire country who has been through infidelity himself and treated it for 30 plus years and cared for well over 3,000 couples and I don't know how many thousands of individuals, but you're dealing with an expert who has his own practice, who still sees clients, you know, 40 to 60 hours a week. You're also dealing with Dr. John Haney and Leslie Hardy, who are other therapists who helped write Harboring Hope, who have personally experienced infidelity. You're dealing with someone like uh, Wayne Baker, who's another therapist who has been through infidelity. Uh, and our therapists are multi-certified. Some of them are sex addiction, addiction specialists. Some of them are trauma specialists. But you're coming or considering coming to literally one of the safest professional environments you've ever been in. I mean, people don't pay good money to come to, you know, scared straight, embarrassed, humiliate programs like this. It just is not what we do. When I do the introductions on Friday morning, I stand up and I tell people it is our hope, it is our commitment, it is a pillar of who we are that this would be one of, if not the safest professional environment you've ever been in as a couple. The other day I was talking to somebody and this kind of prompted the video blog and you know, she said, well, I'm just convinced I'm going to come and you guys are just going to you know, embarrass me and shame me and just I'm going to you know, feel like a doormat. And I, and I just kind of laughed. I said, do you really think that we would do that? I mean, are you going to pay, you know, a substantial amount of money for that? And she kind of laughed and she said, no, but that's like the voice I hear in my head. And so I'm, I'm doing this today to combat the voices that many of you, especially the unfaithful hear, that the EMS weekend is going to be that type of an environment. And I promise you, in fact, the website, if you go to affairrecovery.com and you go to the EMS weekend, there's a refund policy. And in that refund policy, they actually say that they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. I mean, it's hard to beat that, right? And so I'm going to talk about a few pillars that I think are vital to the weekend that I think are important to you. And I want to help you feel a sense of peace that you are considering coming to a place that's going to absolutely change your life. It'll change your marriage, but it's going to change your life because of the principles of recovery that you're going to be subjected to. So I'm going to run down very quickly, but effectively, some points that I want you to remember about the weekend. Or if you're considering it, I want you to have these points in the back of your mind to combat the voices that you probably are, are being subjected to. Number one, I already alluded to it, but the weekend is a safe place. It's a safe place for both spouses. Nobody's going to sit here and say, well, if you'd have had more sex, your spouse wouldn't have cheated. 
Or, you know what, if, if you'd have just been more available to them, they wouldn't have felt the need to go outside the marriage. I mean, that's lunacy. You're not going to hear things like that. Why? Because we've been through it, and we would never say that to you knowing that it's absolutely not true. You're just not going to hear things like that because that's not true. People cheat because they're unhealthy. They don't see a way out. They cheat because they're trying to get their needs met. And the reason a man cheats is typically different than a reason a woman cheats. And a man's recovery has some unique nuances that a woman's recovery doesn't have. And so this is a safe place to find a sense of communication that this isn't, isn't just yelling and screaming and losing your mind, right? Those emotional conversations to two in the morning that you just never even find any rational sense of agreement. That's not what you're coming to. My next point is objectivity. You are coming to an objective place that isn't going to blame one spouse or the other or isn't going to have you, the unfaithful, maybe walk in and have us go, oh, so you're the, uh, you're the one, huh? Well, here you go, cheater. <laughs> there's, there's not going to be that. There's also not going to be this, oh, you're the betrayed spouse, right? So you're the victim, right? I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, but that's kind of the voices that we hear sometimes. I mean, this is an objective place to assess your situation and to be able to decide, do we want to save the marriage? How do we save the marriage? How do we divorce amicably? How do we find new life after the biggest life-changing traumatic situation that you may have ever been to? This is not going to be a jaded approach. This is an objective approach by therapists who see clients all day, every day, who are, I'm sorry, but so good at what they do, they're booked two, three, four weeks in advance oftentimes. Which leads me to my next point, which is all of these therapists are experts, and this is not general care. Okay, everybody that comes is dealing with infidelity, sometimes even addiction. It really just varies. But you're coming to be at an infidelity-specific environment to not just deal with general marriage issues and get lost in the sea of you know, general marriage stuff. You're coming to deal with infidelity-specific issues like how do you deal with reminders and triggers and intrusive thoughts? How do you prevent relapse? How do you make sure this never happens again? Do I want to save my marriage? Do I want to just go and be with the affair partner? What does six weeks from D-Day look like? Six months, six years. Can our marriage ever be the same again? Can we tell our kids? Should we tell our kids? Where do we go from here? How do we reestablish trust? What do we do when we travel? Uh, what do I do when my spouse travels or if I'm traveling? I mean, these are the, the things that we get into. It is all about specialized care, not just kind of general marriage care. Now, having said that, it's important that you understand this will also deal with issues that are maybe not infidelity specific, but they are general marriage issues as of a result of the infidelity. And then there's the other question, which is, well, I'm an unfaithful. Are we going to be able to talk about my needs and what I you know, felt and my rejection and, and, and the issues that I was facing? And I would say to you, absolutely, but we're going to do it with a very delicate hand, a very expert-driven I've had a lot of people come to the EMS weekend and use aliases, and nobody knows it except a couple of our staff members. So if you're worried about being exposed or worried about your name getting out there, listen, people use aliases all the time, and it works wonderfully because they want to hide their identity, and they can certainly accommodate that. Another factor that's important is that I tell spouses who are coming to the weekend who maybe their spouse is reticent or not really sure if they even want to save the marriage and they don't even know but they're willing to come for a variety of reasons that at some level you can be selfish and come to get the healing that you need, right? Because you don't know what your spouse is going to do. You don't know how well they're going to receive it. You don't know how passionate and committed their heart is to the marriage, but you know that yours is. Well, whether you're an unfaithful or whether you're a betrayed, you're going to be given a an incredible amount of information just about your healing and your recovery and what you can do to heal. What your spouse does is up to them, 
but at least you can come to make sense out of maybe why you cheated or make sense out of why your spouse cheated. And how do you heal? How do you forgive? How do you overcome? How do you fight relapse? What do you do in the next chapter of your life? You see, I like to tell couples this. It's kind of like when you come to the weekend, if you have ever had a check engine light come on in your car, it scares you. I have an old Jeep. I love it. But the check engine light is on all the time. It's on right now. And I never really know. Is it a $5,000 problem? Is it a $15 problem? I take it to an expert who owns a Jeep, who's worked on Jeeps for, I think, 15, 20 years. He tells me exactly what it's going to cost. He tells me what's wrong, whether I should fix it or whether I should consider selling it. The EMS is kind of the same way. At the EMS, you're going to decide and you're going to be able to start a framework to answering the questions like, do I want to save the marriage? If I save the marriage, what is it going to look like? You're going to be able to have the codes ran, if you will, which is what they do when a, a car has a check engine light on. You're going to be able to run some codes and actually find out, do I want to even save this marriage? Or has there been so much pain, so much damage that the marriage can't be saved? you're going to be able to have those questions answered for you in a safe, expert-driven way where you can walk away from the weekend with clarity, with peace of mind, and a plan or a protocol specific to your situation. Finally, you know, this is not a conference where you just sit in a lecture hall and have lectures kind of thrown out to you. No, the weekend is a combination of group time, and personal time and time as a couple. You're always with the therapist. You're never handed over to interns or people that are unskilled or unqualified. I'm still great friends with a guy that came to an EMS weekend with me close to 13 years ago. We talk all the time. And let me tell you, you will meet wonderful people that will help normalize your situation. You'll be able to look them in the eye and they're going to feel what you're feeling and, and oftentimes there's kind of an instant friendship because they get you and you get them and you finally have found other people in a community that can support you and help you on your journey to healing. Finally, I believe in the EMS weekend. I think it's life changing. If you have questions about it, fire away down below in the comments. Reach out to the website. Uh, hit me on Twitter. I'll answer all your questions because I believe in it. I think it's an awesome opportunity to finally find the expert care that you have been so desperately looking for in your own recovery as well as potentially the marriages. Mm -hmm.